Hey guys, it's Phil from Earth Nails and Tails, where we show you how to do things the right way the first time here around the homestead. And today I'm going to be telling you my 10 tips on how to raise happy and healthy chickens. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the chicken coop, which is inside of our shed. So let's head on in. All right, so here's our chicken coop. It's about 36 square feet. And ideally when you're designing or buying a chicken coop, you want to have about two square feet per bird. So depending on how many birds you want to have, you need to take that into consideration. So we have our nesting boxes, which are attached to our coop. And then we have our doors, which are large enough for us to be able to get in here and clean it out. Some other things that you really want to consider when you're building your chicken coop is the amount of ventilation that you have. So right here we have a window and then we also have a cutout where we can open it to provide more ventilation and that's extremely important because the chickens are going to be doing a lot of pooping inside of the of the coop. So you want to make sure that that you have enough ventilation to provide proper airflow to get rid of those harmful chemicals that can cause some pretty bad respiratory problems for your birds. So my second tip is providing your birds with the right roost. So Chickens are a little bit different than other birds that we're used to seeing roosting or on wires where they're just grabbing with their feet. Chickens actually roost in a tripod position where they grab with their feet as well as rest on their chest bone. So providing the right roost is vital for your chicken's health and happiness. I personally like to use two by fours and my chickens prefer them as well. And the way I figured that out is by providing different materials for them to rest on and I came out here over the course of a few nights and I found most of them roosting on the two by fours. So I knew that they liked those the best. The other thing that you wanna consider when you're installing your roost is make sure that they're high enough. So they're high enough where the chickens can walk underneath, but also low enough where they can jump on them easily. My third tip for you is designing the proper chicken run. So the first thing that you want to consider is the size of your chicken run if you're not going to allow your birds to free range. And if you're not, then you need to provide them with 10 square feet at least per bird. This is going to promote their health and happiness. So this might be the key design feature that will actually limit the number of chickens that you can have. So really take this into consideration before you buy any of your chickens. When you're designing your coop, you also want to consider protection from predators and also the elements. So notice that I have chicken wire wrapped all the way around my chicken run and I also have a roof on here. So if you're gonna have a larger roof, I would cover about half of it, at least have it covered where it's connected to their chicken coop. And then you can have the other part open so that way they can have exposure to sunlight if need be. Also, I have protection on the ground where when I built the coop, I first laid down some hardware cloth, some quarter inch hardware cloth. I laid that down on the ground, which you can't even see right now. It goes out about a foot and then I covered it with soil and I also put some planter boxes on top of that. What that is gonna do when predators that dig come up to the, to the run, they're gonna try to dig down and they're gonna hit that wire and that's gonna prevent them from getting into your run. My fourth tip, we're gonna talk about nesting boxes and you wanna make sure that you're providing your birds with the right size and number. So at a minimum, you wanna provide one nesting box for every three birds that you have. And you also wanna provide a size that's big enough yet cozy enough for them. And I have found that a 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch or one foot by one foot by one foot box is the best size. So as you can see, I have my three boxes here and in my coop, it is away from a window, away from an entrance, and away from the roost. This is gonna prevent or reduce the amount of traffic near the boxes and give them a nice, safe, and happy place to lay. All right, so my fifth tip is going to be water. And water is extremely important for chickens because it helps with their digestion, their food digestion, and to help regulate their body temperature. So what I like to do is provide a small source as well as a large source of water. So my small source that I try to clean daily is their small feeder that they have hanging from their chicken run roof. And I also have the rain barrel here, which provides a large source 
of natural fresh water. So something great that you can do with their water source is add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and I would only add this to their smaller waterer because you will have to clean it out more often. But what it does is act as an antibacterial and an antiviral to help keep your chickens healthier. And also something that really nice that you can do with your rain barrel is pipe it with PVC and then you can install poultry nipples to those which your birds can then have an unlimited basically unlimited drinking supply all the time and if you are interested in making your own rain barrel make sure you leave a comment below so I know that you guys have some interest in this and then I'll be sure to make my own DIY video showing you step by step on how to make your own so my sixth tip is providing an adequate feeder so having a large feeder is gonna save you a bunch of time in the long run rather than you having to come out to the chickens every single day to give them their food. These two PVC feeders hold about 40 pounds of food, so that means I only have to come out here about once every two weeks to fill these feeders. So not only does it save you time, but it ensures that your chickens always have an adequate supply of food. So for tip number seven, we're going to talk about the bedding. So we have the bedding that we use in the coop and we also have the bedding that we use in the nesting boxes. So a lot of people like to use cedar because it's pretty aromatic and it's cheap, but we like to use hemp and a couple reasons. One, it's more sustainable and it also has better absorption qualities than the cedar does. And the nice thing about this is you can buy it in a 40 or 50 pound bag, so we are not buy, buying it very often. Now inside of our nesting boxes, we really like to use these natural nesting pads, and they provide a great surface for the ladies to lay on, and it provides a nice cushion for the eggs, so that way they're not breaking. And they're also compostable and really easy to take out and replace to make sure that the nesting boxes are staying clean. So the two things that I would not recommend is either hay or straw to use as bedding because they're, if you look into them, they're hollow and they provide perfect nesting grounds for pests and mites, which can then affect the health of your chickens. So my eighth tip is going to be shelter. Extremely important because not only does it provide your ladies protection from flying predators, but it also provides them protection from the elements and those hot and sunny days. So you can provide shelter in numerous ways, such as trees or shrubs, which give them shade and also attract insects and other animals that they can eat for, to add to their diet. Or you can provide hardscaping, such as your chicken run or other things like chairs, decks, all of these things can be used to aid in the health and happiness of your ladies. So my ninth tip is providing your chickens treats. So just like us, we all love our treats and it's just as important for your chickens. A couple things that we like to provide them is the scraps from the garden. This is gonna help them fill their diet, complete their diet, get any nutrition that they're not getting from their food and they also love it. We add ours right to our compost. That way the chickens will jump in the compost pile, stir things up, get things mixed, and they're getting a nice treat while they're doing that for us. The other thing that we love to give them is sunflower seeds because it provides a lot of essential fats and proteins which help with molting and give them a really nice and healthy coat. So for my 10th and final tip is going to be the dust bath. And this is extremely important because it helps your birds stay healthy so that way they can clean themselves. And as you can see here, my girls have dug a nice deep hole in the soil underneath one of the pollinators that we have. And the reason that they do this is, it, as I said, helps keep them clean, but it also helps keep them cool in the hotter days. That soil year round is gonna stay at about the same temperature. So when they're hot, they can go in there spread their wings, get touch their body to the soil, and cool off. If you want to make your own dust bath, I highly recommend a mixture of sand, native soil, and diatomaceous earth. The sand provides a coarse grit which helps them remove any large objects. The native soil provides that beneficial bacteria to keep them healthy in their habitat, and the diatomaceous earth acts as a pest repellent. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap things up for today's episode on the 10 tips that I provided you guys for raising happy and healthy chickens. So if you or you know someone that wants to start raising their chickens or has chickens of their own, you can provide them these tips. So I hope you got something out of it. 
Make sure you please like, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for those follow-up videos. Again, my name's Phil from Earth Nails and Tales. See you next time.